Welcome back everyone. We are going to continue on here with our roofing mini series and um, just to do a quick recap of where we left off in the previous video we had gone through and applied these sheet metal flashings at pretty much all of our different conditions our end wall, side wall, ridge, uh, gutters, gables, um, we did a drip edge up top. Uh, one thing that I did after the fact to help get things to clean up just a little bit more on these ridge corners is I actually went through and added in a little column cap here, which definitely gives it a much better look than having it exposed like that. So that's one little note I wanted to add there. But um, in this video, we're going to continue moving along by actually working through our and starting with some of our associative elements that we can just apply to our roof surfaces. So um, in this video, we'll be talking about the roof surfacer tool, um, which is an easy way just to go through and automatically apply the surfacing to our roofs without having to manually go through and model it like we did in the previous exercises using our steel deck object. So um, you can get these objects here by installing the goodies uh, add-on, which will load in the accessories library. So um, the way to actually apply them is you would select the roof elements, you'd go to this design, design extras, accessories, and then we have these roof accessories. And within here, there's just a few objects, one of them being the roof surfacer tool, which has several different options here, whether you want a standing seam, uh, corrugated, trapezoid, uh, and then it also has tiles built into it as well. So it's kind of limited on the different options and the uh, styles and geometry, but with our standing seam, it definitely does the job and it has enough settings here where we can go through and tweak our spacing of our seams, our height, our offset from our roof. Um, if we want uh, multiple little ribs within it, um, and if we wanted to have seams and how long those seams are spaced apart. So we have all the little options here to really get a detailed uh, standing seam roof coming through. And so that's what we're going to do in this video here. So, um, all right. So what we'll do is I'm actually going to make a few quick adjustments here to our layers. So um, just to point out here, you know, kind of part of the, the ContraBIM template is we have a dual layer system where we actually have layers that are available for like design intent. So I use Uniformat as kind of like a systems method here for managing these layers. But then we also have layers that can take things one level further into more of like a shop drawing level. So everything that we've been applying so far is really on our design layers. Um, but what we can do is we can kind of manually go through and turn off um, these design layers here. So I'm just going to go up and do like the hide selection on our roof coverings. Um, we can do a hide selection on our flashings here, flashings and trim. And so we're just going to kind of peel away our detail here so that we can go through and apply our roof surfacer tool. And we'll do that using the next level of detail, which is our shop drawing level. So, okay. First up here, let's go through and we'll simply just highlight our roof elements. So that's step one in this uh, application of applying the roof surfacer. Uh, step two is just going through to our design, design extras, accessories, and roof accessories. And so once you pull this up, we just go through and select our settings here. So um, in this case, we can just kind of leave everything as a default and simply just apply it and we'll see what we get. So, okay, there we go. We've now applied our uh, surfacer options. And so now we can just simply go through and uh, check out our settings. We can um, do a marquee around this. We can grab all of these objects and then start going through and making adjustments as well. So we can pull this up, we can you know, space things out a little bit more. Maybe we'll make it a little bit wider. If we want two ribs in the middle, we could do that. We can increase our height on those seams. Um, we can maybe reduce our offset from the roof a little bit. 
Um, we can make our seam lengths just a little bit longer. And of course we can re-specify our surface here. So I kind of like using just some of these different uh, colors that we have available. Um, when I think of standing seam, I think of like a light blue or like a pale jade somewhere, or maybe even this celadon. So we can apply these and just quickly get some different uh, styles coming through with these standing seams. So what's great about these is these are associative elements. So if we take this roof here on the top, we can simply just go through and adjust our slope on it. And you'll see that the surfacer objects stick with those hosted objects and move along with them here. So that makes it really nice. You can um, extend things in different directions and it will grow and shrink with it. So, um, so yeah, that's one of the benefits of using the surfacer object is it just kind of sticks to the surface and um, makes it really easy to adjust later on. So, um, so yeah, that is, uh, you know, the, the basics here of how we can go through and um, work with these roof surfacer tools. Um, pretty straightforward. I'm going to kind of take these, adjust them back down. I do want to make a quick note here that um, with these surfacer objects, we once again are a little bit limited on our takeoffs with them. So uh, to prove that point here, um, I'm just going to select all of these. We're just going to call this uh, surfacers, surfacer object as the ID so we just know what they are. We can go in here, I'm just going, I think we already have this on its own individual uh, cost code, but we'll just break this out, call this surfacer. And so let's go through, just like we've been doing in the previous videos, we'll give this a part four as a phase description. And then let's just add that criteria to our scheme settings. So add criteria, phase, part four is this video. And so we can pull these through um, and check our takeoffs. And the thing with this, with our surface area and these surfacer objects is it's actually going to go through and calculate the surface area of the entire element. So it's going to pick up those seams, it's going to pick up all the little ridges and everything. And unfortunately, it's not going to give us a very good takeoff. So we can grab one of these here, like this 534. We can highlight it in 2D. We can do a quick check here on what the surface area is in our plan. So yeah, 376, that's a little bit less. We can pick up our roof element. Just by highlighting going into our element information. So our roof surface top, yeah, we were right at 400. So yeah, we're over by about 150 square feet. And that value on this is going to change depending on what type of surface we have. So if we just went through, for example, and say we wanted to have something with like really tall ridges just for the sake of demonstrating this takeoff. So we give it some really tall ridges here and we go back and we can see that that's going to be adjusted, you know, dramatically there. So, um, so yeah, unfortunately that's not the best. Um, these aren't the best for performing these takeoffs, but, um, it just, you know, it is what it is. It's great for kind of a quick visual here of, um, of the, of the content and of like the design intent. But, uh, but yeah, once again, we're going to be better off using that host object or that host roof element to perform those actual takeoffs here. So, okay, with that, we can go ahead and we can kind of start bringing some things back here in this, in this view. So I'm just going to go ahead and show all. So now we actually have both right on top of each other. Um, we can go into that original um, sheet, sheet, uh, steel deck object, and we can simply just hide that one. Um, if we wanted to kind of blend these through where we have both working at once, we've already set up all of our 
uh, flashings and trims. And so now if we wanted, we could just, uh, it looks like we have a little bit of an overlap there. So we can just grab our objects here once again. And let's just make that slight adjustment to get those to drop down just a little bit. So um, if we reduce this to quarter inch, that might even do it. Or in this case, if we went to like 1.75 inches, um, I think that's going to kind of tuck right down and look pretty good. So yeah, that looks pretty nice. So, okay. There we go. That's the roof uh, surfacer tool. Um, and once again, I mean, there's a lot of cool little things that we can do with this. Um, uh, you can always go through, switch it up, adjust it to, you know, something else like a trapezoid. You can set this to, you know, 1.75 inches. And just, uh, you know, we can quickly make these adjustments and get a different look coming through so um all right that's it let's uh we'll wrap this one up here this will be a little bit shorter of a video in the next video though we'll go through and um we'll actually switch out our trims with railing uh, elements here and so we can make it so that we have both the surfacer objects as well as the trims and we can make all of them associative which is uh, pretty cool so um, yeah we'll be talking about that here in the next video and uh, we'll wrap this one up for now and let me know if you have any questions um, yeah thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video coming up soon